Here we go with some DM tips for Thither and Loom Lurch. This is Chapter 3 of the D&D adventure, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. There will be spoilers here, so if you're a player, please go play the adventure first and then come back and check out this video. For the DMs, this adventure is for level 4 through 5 characters, and I would recommend leveling before the characters arrive in Loom Lurch. The page references that are here and in the description below are to the hardcover. The authors of this one are Stacey Allen, Will Doyle, Ari Levitch, and Christopher Perkins. The adventure should run about eight hours long. But before we get into the pacing, let's look at the Prismere overview, which is in the previous chapter. And I've made some macros there, which I have in the notes below, that you, really, uh, that you can copy and use in the game. And they will just post into the chat window in Roll20 DM notes for things like the mists, the guides, the rules of Feywild, the children, which will be important in this adventure, emotion, death, foraging. Now, let's get into the pacing for this adventure. So I think this will run about eight hours long. Here is kind of how I see it going. Um, in chapter, or in the first four hours, will be mostly exploration of the land of Thither outside of Loom Lurch. In the first hour, the arrival, I'd put the Dryad random encounter like the first encounter. It really sets the, the mood for what's happening here in Thither. And then I'd have them run into the first wanted poster just outside Nib's cave, and then see the light and get into Nib's cave. And then if that doesn't fill up an hour, add in one or more random encounters to fill in the hour. Then hours one to two and two to three should be basically traveling through Thither uh, with an arrival at Little Oak and interaction with Will and the getaway gang during the, all that traveling and thither. So I'd fill in the first hour with random encounters. When that hour two mark hits after a break or um, <clears throat> partway into hour two, I do the encounter with Little Oak. And then we got the random encounters uh, to fill up the that rest of that hour if that isn't filled up. And then the visit to the Wayward Pool at the top of the third hour. Zarek attacks and then a long rest and leveling up at Little Oak and going over the plan for the next uh, adventure day. So then the next adventure day, four more hours, and this is about Loom Lurch. So I would do in the first hour approaching Loom Lurch, interactions at the Goblin Market. This is all assuming the party follows Will's plan. If they follow their own plan, then you'll have to ad lib this to uh, you know what their plans are for getting into Loom Lurch. So approaching Goblin Market, and then sit down for tea with Scabatha, Granny Nightshade, in the parlor. Now the alarm should go off at about the top of the first hour hour into it, hour five to hour six. Uh, Granny will depart from the party, leave them alone and to their own devices after they fight off the mimics. And then they'll try and get the kids out, explore. I would put the final showdown with Scabatha right about the top of hour six, the second hour of the second day. And that is because there's lots to explore here and you can't really explore it when you're limited on time. So I would do that. Maybe it's slightly anticlimactic there in the exploration stages, but there's so much cool things for the party to find that I'd definitely move that up a little bit, not make it like the end of the session, the encounter with the uh, Scabatha. Okay, let's go over, uh, let's see, music. So I would do for the music for this, uh, The Feywild by Tabletop Audio. I have it playing right now in the background. I'll turn it up here for a second. Just some nice uh, Feywild music. Great for the background for this part of the adventure. Now, for the adventure, I like to do, um, well, there'll be a bunch of questions to ask, and I'll put them in the in the chat below, but um, you need to know who's missing an item and suspect it's with Scabatha. And then there's several things that could have happened at the um, Witchlight Carnival. Who is the Witchlight Monarch? I am forever forgetting that, so I'm going to be more careful to remember that. Did you receive singing lessons from Polisha because I'll come up in the fairy rings? Did your Lagron, the displaced beast, give them the, the mirrored wall? That'll come up in the little oak encounter. Did you take any costumes from the Witchlight Carnival? There were several costumes that involved unicorn horns. There's also some candy that involves unicorn horns that could all come into play when they're trying to get into the wayward pool. Did you win at hide and seek in the Witchlight Carnival? That'll come into play in the garden with Granny Nightshade. Are you here on a chore from Babylonia? That'll lead them to the portrait room. 
uh, have them think about ahead of time what their four closest family members would look like. And that will come into play again in the, the portrait room and is a really good hint as to who uh, they're dealing with, what the, who the hags are here in this adventure. And it also let them get more detail than their descriptions because it's hard to just on the fly come up with that sort of stuff. And then lastly, did you lose anyone in the Hall of Mirrors? And that's Reuben Sugarwood, who they can find here in the kitchen. All right, then for some um, like character knowledge, I like to share this ahead of time so players can share this with the others in character. And these will all be down below. There is some with like bardic knowledge or history would know about the League of Malevents. Barter history again for Valor's Call. The nature and fey or sylvan knowledge for red caps, for boggles, for compastries. Survival for knowing about foraging for food and water. Survival plus a little extra like fey or sylvan for knowing that there are treats that can be found if you're lucky. All right, now let's look at the locations in the adventure. And I'll zoom this map out for you. So here's how I set up chapter three. You got the big tree of loom lurch, a big giant uh, encounter area that the players can explore and it's very cool. You have various maps of other encounters around the periphery here. Uh, several of these are from the Wild Beyond the Witchlight map pack, which I'll have links below. Some are from event here games, this one specifically of the pool, also links below. And Tessa presents 80 maps for the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. I'm not using one of those here, but I have in other chapters and that's a very good resource as well. All right, so the party comes into thither. They come in near Nib's cave. Again, I'd have the dried encounter first, then into Nib's cave, uh, the first wanted poster. And here's a map for the dried encounter. And this is a good map. This came with the Wild Beyond the Witchlight map pack. Great map also for doing any of the other random encounters in the adventure. Then, um, and again, I'd use those for pacing to fill up the time. Now, when I ran it, no problem doing every random encounter in the first four hours. And they all add a lot to the story, so I definitely recommend doing that. Now, Nib's Cave. When they come to Nib's Cave, hopefully uh, one or more of your players may have taken part in the uh, Waterdeep um, Dragon Heist Adventures. So you can fit Nib's backstory into that, or if you go on in the future to run those, you can have Nib play a recurring role. Then, after Nib's Cave, you come to Little Oak. Now, if you run any of the fairy rings and the parties receive True Sight, that's going to change up the inner encounter with Will quite a bit. Um, also, you'll want to know if they have Dear Logren's Ball when they arrive at Little Oak. Then, assuming they don't fight Will and they are friends with the, uh, with the getaway gang, then there's the Wayward Pool, and the costumes from the Witchlight Encounter can come in handy there when they get to the Wayward Pool. After they've done the Wayward Pool, oh, and there they could also run into Zarak. I would strengthen him a little bit. He, I mean, he wouldn't last around in most cases, so I'd give him a chance to get away um, and be more more scary in the fight. And then someone or anyone who knows about the League of Malevents knows that he's in it and can share that with the party. Or if they capture him, they can find out more information about him. Okay. So that would be the, and then the party would return to Little Oak and rest, and that'd be the end of their first day. Then they approach Loom Lurch. So the approach to Loom Lurch has a plan happen where the getaway gang is going to send some members up to the hill over here, and they're going to um, make the scarecrows go crazy. Will is going to use that diversion to sneak into the kitchen, and from the kitchen, get up to the... Um, the area up above the kitchen and hopefully um, get those lost children out of there. That is the textile mill. Now what that'll leave is the children that are in the sewing room and the dormitory. The party is going to go in first before any of this happens to the market, talk to the goblins there, ask them if they can see Scabatha. They'll be taken to the parlor over here and in the parlor, though, I'll be asked to sit down. And Scabbath will visit them. Uh, my party, of course, turned the crank right away and rolled the number to get the uh, dragon to come out. So be prepared for that. Um, 
when Scabbath is talking to the party, the alarm will go off. I'd say the alarm will go off at you know the end of the first hour of the second session. Scabbath will eye the characters warily, suspicious that they're involved, but leave them to go find out what's going on in the garden. This, oh, and but she'll say for the chairs to keep them here. The party might wrestle against the chairs. The chairs will turn into mimics. Fight will ensue if the party tries to use this opportunity to go get the children out, which they should. If you've got a strong party, you can make all four chairs mimics. Uh, as written, there's three of them as mimics. So the party then is going to run through the f- door here to get the kids out. They're supposed to get out. Philomena, Sung, and Na. And here the boggles should try and, like, you know, put oil, boggle oil down all over the place. The kids know about all the other kids. So they would know that there's kids in the sewing room and in the dormitory. And so the party will hopefully go get them. Another thing you can have is that Will might have told them how many he expects to be here in this workshop. And the party should be looking for, instead of just three, um, seven kids. And the other kids can lead them away that way. So the party should hopefully continue on. They'll come into the barracks room here, but all the soldiers should be gone. They can come into the textile room. Uh, not a good chance to trick the two guards there. And so it'll probably be a fight there before they get Roth, the bugbear, and Wendell, the halfling. If I had more time, I would do better tokens for all the kids, but I'd just use a generic kid for all the kids and put their names in a real brief description for the uh, players to see. From there, they can go past that. Okay, so if they get that done, they get those kids out, they'll go up the stairs to the dormitory, and then uh, at that point is when I started having some of the tin soldiers come back because I was about at the two-hour mark when we got to that point. And I would actually put, you know, that kind of encounter or Scabatha there a little bit early. Like, I wouldn't make her the actual last thing that happens because there's so much cool stuff to explore here that I would give some time for that to happen after the encounter with Scabatha as we went over in the, uh, <clears throat> in the pacing above. Okay, so we got, uh, oh, back in the parlor, and I forgot it when I was doing this, this thing, there's the lily pad here. So I'd put a token or something for the lily pad here in the parlor. But if you forget that, later on when Babylon is seen in the study, maybe she has it rolled up in a bookshelf or something like that. That's what I did. So the garden, if they should, the party should follow Scabbath out in the garden, I don't suspect that'll happen. Or if they have their own plan for getting in, they could um, sneak through the garden and remember if they're hide and seek champions, they'll have advantage on doing that from the witch site carnival with the pixies. Then, before or after their final encounter with Bablorna, they can come to the room of the portraits. This is a really cool way to give some exposition to the party for some background of who these hags are, what's going on here. See if, We'll see if your party figures it out from... Definitely have one of them prick their fingers, if at all possible, to show their family portrait, and then it should dawn on them that the family portrait of the hags indicates that Baba Yaga is related to all of them, they're all related to Baba Yaga, and they're all related to Tasha. All right. And then maybe it'll start dawning on them who uh, Tasha is in this adventure. Now, in the kitchen, uh, Mishka likely would be already rescued by Will, but um, think if I ran again, I'd make it so Will wasn't able to break the chains on her or something like that, so she's still there. Because she can give the idea about putting the hag in the oven, and that's kind of a cool fairy tale way for the hag to go. Uh, The hag did meet their end in this room when I ran it, and when the hag meets their end, don't forget the beetle. I forgot the beetle when the hag met, met her in when Scabbath was slain. Um, in the kitchen, Mishka knows the password to the dollhouse. That's not told to you until you get to the dollhouse, but if you remember here, it, it makes it a little bit more uh, you know, immersive. Let's see. And then if the party lost him in the Hall of Mirrors, the little half thing, Sugarfoot will be here. Also, Elkhorn is here, and there's where the party can learn some information about Valor's call. And if you had it, it you know, given to a party member beforehand, they can, in character, share some of that information. All right, then we got the study. And if you forgot the bobbing loaded pad, you can have it rolled up here in a bookshelf. Bavlorna won't fight unless attacked. And so Scabatha was killed when I ran it in the kitchen. Um, Bavlorna, they let get away. Up the stairs into the bedroom. And in here, the last thing will be in the dollhouse. And that is the end of the adventure. So this is a really fun adventure. Kind of reminds me of Goonies or some of those uh, old classic movies with the getaway gang. Great location to explore. I think you'll have a lot of fun here. Have a great time. 
come back and let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching.